delicious day here in the Let's Make Food from Food Kitchen and today we're making some homemade pasta. Homemade pasta, huh? Sounds delicious. It is. Pasta likely originated in China and it was made from rice flour and water. In Italy, it was made from hard wheat and eggs. That's what I'm making here today is the wheat and the egg version. Now what I have here is five cups of unbleached flour. Now, double zero flour and semolina flour are options. They are not as common in the grocery stores as the regular unbleached flour, which is why I chose to use this because the other flours are gonna give you a little bit better of a pasta, but not everybody has access to that. So that's what I'm gonna use today. And then maybe down the road, when I make a different style of noodle, we will use either the double zero or the semolina flours. So what I wanna do with my five cups of flour, I am going to, with my fork, create a, a valley in my flour and that's gonna serve as a bowl to crack the eggs into. And these eggs, I got lucky finally. <laughs> I've been going to the farmer's market later in the mornings um, and the gentleman I usually buy eggs from has been out um, the last four or five times I've gone and it's been so disappointing. So here is my bowl, inside my bowl. <laughs> um, so I have five and they are room temperature eggs. Please do room temperature. Let me take these out and use this bowl for the discard. There we go. So the rule of thumb is one cup of flour to one egg. And I just wanna crack it right on into this little bowl. Prepare yourself for a little bit of a workout. Ooh, and try not to get the shells in there because that's not gonna make for a nice smooth pasta. Okay, I'm gonna tilt it a little bit so you can see what this looks like. Next thing I wanna do, I'm just going to poke each of the yolks to get them broken up. And I'm just gonna start mixing the egg together. And as I do that, I'm gonna start grabbing just a little bit of the flour at a time and slowly start incorporating the flour into the eggs. And you will see that as you do this, it gets thicker. Just please be patient. I know it's tempting to just do this really fast and get it all together. Um, good pasta takes patience and time and you wanna avoid getting big lumps of flour in there. And part of how you do that is by slowly incorporating this. And you just keep this up and it's gonna take some time. So I'm just gonna keep doing this and you just keep doing this and you'll be able to tell um, when it's ready to move on to the kneading phase. So if you're trying to figure out how much to make for your family, it is, like I said, the one cup of flour per one egg. I do one cup per person in the house and you can dry whatever pasta is left over if you've got too much. So this is what it's starting to look like. Just keep going. Once it starts getting to be difficult to move around with your fork, it's time to start doing it by hand. And we are at that point. I'm gonna get some gloves on. You can do it with or without gloves if you'd like. All right, I'm just gonna get my fork out of there and start working it with my hands. If your moisture content isn't enough to make your dough come together after you've worked with it, um, what you can do is add another egg and then make sure you blend that in really well. One of the reasons that that might happen is if your eggs are smaller, you didn't use the extra large eggs, um, if it's very dry where you live, there's lots of things that can cause that, but it all has to do with your moisture ingredients versus your dry ingredients and finding that balance. So I'm gonna go ahead, because this is not quite where it should be, it is coming together, but not enough. So I'm gonna go ahead and add an egg. And I'm going to carefully work it in as best I can. I'm gonna break that yolk. My hands are already dirty with the gloves, so I'm just gonna try and spread it around as much as I can, because I don't want just a clump of egg in the center where I cracked it anymore, I wanna get that worked in. So we can start to get that consistency of the solid dough. So I'm bringing some of that from the bottom and putting it on top where that egg is still. And if you ever wanted to, you could just do that right on your countertop. If you have a smooth countertop like that, um, you could even do it on a smooth wooden cutting board, um, stainless steel surfaces. You don't have to do it in a bowl. You can do it right on the countertop. And I just choose not to do that um, because this cutting board tends to slide around if I'm kneading things on it. And this one, um, I don't wanna put anything I'm gonna eat on that surface directly like this. So now it's starting to stick together. 
like I needed to. And you'll note that I didn't add any water. I didn't add any salt. When you cook your noodles, you'll salt your water and that's where your salt content will come from in your pasta. And you can make flat noodles, round noodles, elbow macaroni noodles, all kinds of noodles with this. It just depends on what equipment you have. If you don't have a pasta roller or a pasta cutter um, or anything like that, then you can just roll it out and do flat noodles. Like a linguine or a fettuccine. You can make them as thick or as thin as you'd like. Home style noodles. A big sheet for lasagna. There's still a lot you can make without having a bunch of tools. All right, now we're starting to get some progress. You're gonna need this for 10 minutes. I know it's a long time. Consider it your workout for the day. And then you'll wrap it up and let it sit in the fridge for a nice little rest. And please, 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 please don't skip that step. Your dough needs some time to rest and develop. Once you're confident that your dough is ready for the next step, go ahead and wrap it in your plastic. Now, if you're making a large batch like this, I cut mine in half because you want it to stay chilled and moist while you work with it. So I'm gonna take half of it and kind of just get it back into a bowl. Just like this. Again, it should be smooth and silky. It shouldn't stick in any way to you. Okay, so now that I have this ball, I'm gonna take my piece of plastic here. I'm gonna put my ball in the corner, almost, and I'm going to tie and tightly roll it. So what I wanna do is get the corners folded up. We just don't want any moisture escaping. Okay, there's one. And then I'm gonna do it again with this other one. Uh, we wanna let this sit in the fridge for at least 30 to 40 minutes. And I know it's tempting to rush through your day, um, but don't skip this step because your pasta will not be um, the texture that it should be if you don't allow it that time to rest and come together. And that will only happen if you allow it to. It's not the prettiest ball of dough, but it's my ball of dough. Same thing, tuck the corners there, fold up. And this is simply to ensure that it is completely covered, not exposed to air while it sits in your refrigerator. So, two balls of dough going in the fridge at least a half an hour, 40 minutes if you can, maybe even a little longer. Say goodnight. It is time to roll out our pasta. This is a pasta roller, it's a manual crank. Um, I will put a link down to this below in the description if you're interested in taking a look. It's not a super expensive one. Um, I do have the pasta attachment for the KitchenAid, but it's expensive, not very accessible um, to anyone with a financial crunch. So um, I didn't want to bust that out and be like, hey, here's how you do it. Um, I wanted it to be something that anyone watching um, might be able to get this. And if not, we're gonna roll it out by hand too and just see how it's done. So I think that's what we'll do first. I'm gonna set this aside. I'm gonna grab a knife. I thought I was prepared for you and I wasn't. I didn't have my rolling pin or my bench knife. So I'm gonna go ahead and just set this aside and I'm gonna cut this up into some pieces here. It's nice and chilled. I let it go for quite a while. I ran to the store, did some errands and I'm just gonna cut it into sections. Then whatever I'm not working with, I'm going to put it back in the plastic because again, we don't want it to dry out, which is why I didn't just throw it away. Okay, that part's ready. So let's just do this. Doesn't need to be pretty. All right, so we want to get this into a rectangle shape. And what you can do as you roll this, it's gonna have uneven edges. So the way to work around that is to get it pretty flat and then you fold it. And you can start accomplishing some even edges because now they're a folded edge. 
and it does take a little effort to get there. When you're doing this by hand, you wanna make sure that it is thin. It is pretty easy to leave it too thick because of the effort that you're putting in to rolling it out. But if it's too thick, then your pasta, when you cook it, it expands with water. So you wanna make sure that you get it really thin. So as you can see, it's slowly lengthening and thinning. This is still not thin enough, this right here. I want it to be much thinner. So I'm just gonna keep on rolling it until I get to where I need it to be. So I'm gonna it. And this little part right there, I'm just gonna fold it. I'm gonna roll it backwards onto itself before I roll forward. Now that I've got it kind of the shape that I wanted, it's fairly rectangular. Now I'm gonna start pressing harder and really trying to get that length. We're getting there. I'm starting to see a thinner version of what we started with. And you can see how the light is not as dark here as it is here. You wanna be able to get a little more light through there. So I know that this part right here, I can slow down on and just keep working on the rest of it. So what I'm gonna do, when I'm done rolling this out, I'm gonna slice it into pieces and then we're gonna compare it to what it looks like in the roller. So you can kind of see the difference. And even the roller, there are steps to that too. There are a couple of tools you can use to slice up your pasta if you're doing it by hand. You can just use a regular knife or you can use a pizza cutter, because the wheel. It is totally fine to use either one. I'm gonna do this one with my knife. And I wanna try and get these as even as possible in terms of the thickness. Okay, now I have all of my pasta is sliced, so I'm just gonna slide it right on in there. And then we're gonna start working with the roller. I'm gonna take one more section out. And this is only half, remember, this is half of the dough that I started with, the other half is still in the fridge. So that's gonna sit there till we're ready. And my plan is to make, half of it is going to be the flat noodle, and I'm gonna make a chicken and cream sauce for you with that. And then the, I'm gonna make the round spaghetti with the press and we will dry that and I'll let it dry out. And then I will save it and make spaghetti. Okay, there's a couple of steps with this. It has a removable handle. It also has a clamp where you can clamp it on to your table and my table is too thick to do that with. So I'm not gonna do that. I am just going to hold it down and hope it doesn't slide all over the place because um, even without the cutting board it's like this shy put it on there and you're just gonna start rolling it through and it's gonna create a sheet for you and you'll see it start to come through and I have it on the largest setting for, for this roller it's number seven and I think for most rollers that's that's the case okay and I'm just holding it down and turning the crank and this is gonna be the thickest Ooh, there goes the crank oh there's six in there. So that's the first setting. That's about where it was after a couple of minutes of really rolling it out. So this is a really worthwhile tool. Um, I am going to fold it and run it through again. And it does take a little bit of strength and if it was clamped to the table, it would probably be a little bit easier, but it's not. So we're just gonna do what we can do. So what you can see is that it's going to laminate it a little bit. There's an air bubble. I don't know how the air bubble got in there. What I want to do is go ahead and take it down to five. So I've adjusted it down. Oops, that's six. I've adjusted it down two notches. And I'm just going to put a tiny bit more flour in there. And off we go. This is challenging holding it one-handed because it's not clamped down. <laughs> okay. I'm going to grab down the side both of these lines there with that. It will start getting longer because it is the one piece. So what I wanna do is fold this in half. I'm trying to even it out just a little bit. We're gonna pass it through again on this setting. Now I'm going to move it down to three and off we go again. Look at this. 
Now we're really getting some thinness here. Okay, now I'm gonna move it down to the one. This is the thinnest it's going to be. And I just need it to grab that edge of the pasta before I let go. There we go, perfect. I'm just gonna lay it over the back and crank away. And this is so much easier than that first couple of times we passed it through because it's thinner. going to be some nice long fettuccine. Here we go. You can see the light through it really well. There's my hand if you can see that. Nice and thin. And I am going to run it through the fettuccine. So I have to move my handle. Put the end in there very carefully and just start rolling it through. Okay. And you will see that it's starting to come out the other side. Even though I'm using this um, for a meal really quickly, I don't want it to sit and stick together. So that's why I wanna go ahead and hang it up. And let's compare our pieces really quickly. You can easily see the difference between the hand rolled, this one, and the press rolled. So much thinner. So now that I've showed you that, I wanna run this through here because I, these are going to be really too thick um, and that was my choice just because I wanted you to see the challenge it can be and it's worth it if you have the time to sit and roll it out to get it thin. And that's perfect and now I have a thin piece. It's a little wider than the other ones but I'm going to go ahead and do that with all of these but I'll do it later. All right, for your spaghetti noodles, the beginning process is exactly the same. You are going to put your roller to the biggest setting, usually number seven. Then you're gonna roll it through a couple of times. There we go. There's our spaghetti, and that is a fairly thin spaghetti. So I'm gonna hang it up to dry. And I'm gonna leave it overnight for drying. And I'm gonna do the rest later because you don't need to see me continually rolling out this dough. I hope you enjoyed this video and that it was helpful for you. From my kitchen to yours, let's make food from food. That's one boy puppy.